Good morning and um, welcome to class, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining the class in Children's Ministry. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask one of you to please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Yes, go ahead, Jepina. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for the class we are about to have. Children are a blessing from above, Jesus. And we thank you, God, uh, for Pastor Selena, who's teaching us on how to guide the children from their young age so that uh, when they grow up, God, they won't drift away from the gospel, but they will keep shining for your kingdom. God, uh, help us to apply everything that we learn in our life when we see the children so that God, uh, they will be built up, they'll be equipped uh, for your kingdom, for your purposes, and they will be yours forever. We give you all the glory and honor. Give us a good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Jeffina. So last class we began looking at uh, the importance of ministering uh, to children, why is it important for us to minister to children? And also we looked at the biblical basis and the mandate or the command uh, for children's ministry. Uh, so in that we looked at uh, God has a plan for children and that his plan includes uh, family, the importance of uh, uh, the importance God placed in uh, teaching children uh, from scripture, we also saw the children uh, were an integral part of the covenantal community of Israel. Uh, they were also part of the corporate worship, that is um, praising and worshipping God, prayer, repentance, uh, public reading of scripture, and also uh, salvation. And hence, um, we pointed out that, you know, since children were part of the covenantal community, uh, in the Old Testament, that is the Israelites, they're also part of the covenantal community uh, today, and that is of the church. And uh, hence, they should be included in uh, various aspects of church life. Uh, they should be trained and taught how to meaningfully participate in uh, the various aspects of uh, the life and the ministry of the uh, church. We also saw that ministering to children was a priority for Jesus, yes. Uh, the disciples did not think that children should be ministered to, but uh, Jesus did. And uh, he made time to minister to uh, children. Uh, hence, uh, you know, ministering to children should be a high priority for us as a uh, church and uh, us as adults who are part of the uh, church. We also looked at a few more reasons um, why ministering to children is important. Uh, we'll just look at uh, two more and then we will uh, move on to what is the real essentials in uh, children's uh, ministry. Okay, so the first thing is that children are, uh, you know, um, the future leaders of the church. So we're just looking at a few more reasons why ministering to children uh, is important. Uh, children are the future leaders um, of the church. Uh, hence, you know, the values, uh, the scripture, the teachings, the doctrines that we instill in them, uh, you know, uh, at a very young age uh, will remain in their lives for the rest of their lives and will also, you know, help us as a church to raise up a generation uh, 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 who would, you know, know, would be rooted and strong in the word of God. And also there would be a generation who will raise up the generation after them. Okay. We read in Judges that, uh, you know, because the law wasn't taught to the next generation, you know, the generations came about who did not even know the deeds or the words or the laws of God, and they 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 uh, uh, lived in sin. So it's important that even as we teach uh, children at the very young age, they will, you know, uh, rise up to be um, the future leaders of our church, um, taking on 
uh, the mantle, taking on uh, the the calling uh, that is uh, on the church, and they will also in turn raise up the next generation after them, even as they grow older. Okay, so the kids that we are teaching today would be the future evangelists, missionaries, pastors, you know, bishops, leaders, apostles, uh, uh, whatever you know, you can call them. Uh, uh, you know, and whatever you can designate responsibilities uh, to them, you know, they grow up to be the future leaders. And so it's important for us to give them uh, a strong foundation, build them up in the word of God, build them up in their walk of faith, in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, children are also, uh, you know, uh, ones who need to feel God's love. So children's ministry can be a time when, uh, you know, children truly get to experience um, God's unconditional love, just experience God's goodness, his favor, his faithfulness, just um, know who the God who has called them, the God whom they serve, the God whom they worship. Um, and uh, also it's important for us to raise up this uh, next generation in the church uh, uh, of children who would know their worth in Christ, would know their identity in Christ, would know uh, that they are loved by God. So it's very important for us to root them in these basic uh, truths because, um, you know, we really don't know the background uh, that, you know, children uh, who come to Sunday school or to children's churches or the the background of the children we meet, uh, what is going uh, in and through their minds, their lives, what they're facing at school, the challenges, the difficulties. You know, some children can be bullied. Some children can find um, studies difficult. They're not able to cope up. Some children are fine, uh, are living in fear. Uh, some children are, um, you know, overwhelmed with um, uh, the uh, uh, relationship, uh, uh, you know, that the parents are sharing. Um, maybe the parents are not in good terms, fighting, coming to the end, uh, verge of divorce. Uh, so, you know, they go through, even though if they're very, very small, I remember, you know, one of the uh, children's church ministers was telling me that, um, I think it was last year, you know, a child in, um, um, I think she was in grade one or, uh, you know, upper kg, uh, you know, uh, the, the teacher was teaching them how to trust in God, to share all your problems and needs. And uh, if they wanted, uh, they had any prayer requests, personal prayer requests, they can share with the teacher and the teacher can pray for them. So this uh, this child, I think in upper KG or grade one, I forget, was, uh, you know, mentioned that, you know, their uh, parents are fighting and the ch their parents are going to get divorced. And uh, the the... The teacher was shocked because here was, you know, this grade one, the child in grade one or upper kg, so small, but able to understand, uh, you know, what is going on at home, how it's impacting her. And she says, I feel very sad, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, my, my brother is also very sad. I think the brother is now in uh, eighth grade. You know, so uh, it was very, very heartbreaking, very sad. So we think, you know, children at that age don't really realize, don't really know, but they are going through a lot of challenges. And so it's so important for us to, uh, you know, teach them God's love, you know, uh, just know that God loves them, cares for them, is compassionate, gracious, uh, hears their prayer, answers them. They can speak to God. They can share with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is there to help them. So we, we can think that, you know, if whether children will understand or not, uh, you know, we don't have to worry because I think nowadays children, uh, the age that we are in, they know much more than we were when I was in, uh, you know, upper KG or grade one. Uh, you know, so so important for us to just give them these truths. Uh, just wait on the Holy Spirit uh, and ask the Holy Spirit to uh, help you what, you know, you need to speak to these children and sometimes, you know, just speak, decree, promises, uh, speak over their lives. It's so important at a very, very young age. Okay. So any questions so far on um, uh, these uh, reasons why ministering to children is important? We looked at the various reasons. Um, any questions?
Any questions anyone has? Anything you would like to share from your personal experiences? No? <laughs> yes, go ahead, uh, Jafina. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, uh, that we, the today's kids, they know much more than what we know. Uh, I think last Sunday I was teaching in the children's church and I was uh, surprised that uh, they were asking me about uh, why God didn't forgive Adam, why God didn't forgive me. <laughs> and I think even in, in their age, I, I never even had those doubts. I I was not bold enough even to ask those doubts. Uh, on those days when a Sunday class teacher teaches, I'll be like, yeah, that's the truth. And I'll just blindly follow. And I think that's why I'm here. But today's uh, children, they have this logical thinking at, at a very young age that they want to know the reasons. They want to know why and what and when and where and uh, i think this the class that we had last time really helped me when i went back this sunday knowing that uh, it's very important to pray uh, to prioritize uh, it's not a place where we just give color books and <laughs> just make them color anymore it's it's more like it was more like a sermon for me out there last sunday it was like where they were asking me some some questions which I ask in my second year and third year of the other day, I feel like they are asking me those questions. And uh, I think it's really important for us to learn all these, to be prepared and uh, so that they won't drift away from the gospel. So. Yes. Thank you for sharing. Uh, John Paul, uh, you had asked, uh, you know, um, what is the age uh, for the you know, the child who joined the Holy Spirit baptism class? So I, I checked with the mother. Uh, she's now 10 years old, so it was two years back, so she should have been eight years old. Does that help, John Paul? Okay, so uh, we looked at the, you know, a biblical basis and the mandate for children's ministry. Uh, we also looked at a few reasons why ministering to children uh, is important. Uh, Okay, so now we look at the real essentials in uh, children's ministry. Uh, basically, I just listed out five essential foundations uh, for all church-based ministry uh, to children. And uh, these ideas were inspired by the free training at Children's Desiring God. So I got this from uh, their website. Um, so just looking at five essentials in uh, children's ministry or how can we invest in children uh, for creating in them a, a, a godly heart, a heart that loves God, a, a heart that desires God, a, love, a heart that desires to love God and worship Him. So the first thing is that children's ministry must be God-centered. Okay, Children's ministry must be uh, God-centered. Uh, I don't, I don't know where my uh, PowerPoints for the, those uh, things is missing, but anyway. <coughs> the first thing is that children's ministry must be God-centered. What do I mean by saying that children's ministry must be God-centered? Any ideas? When we say that children's ministry must be God-centered, what do we mean? I think maybe not just games and activities, but everything uh, pointing out to God might be one thing uh, which they may mean. Okay, yes. Uh, the games, the activities, the programs, the curriculum, everything, you know, it means that our teaching, uh, everything that we teach, we must emphasize who God is. Okay, emphasize God's uh, character, his nature, his attributes, his greatness. And uh, we must help children see, you know, how strong, big, and faithful, and loving, and majestic, and awesome, and powerful, 
and compassionate and gracious. You can go on with the list uh, that our God is. Okay, um, how smart he is, how, uh, you know, uh, 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 his wisdom is unsearchable, you know, how satisfying our God is, um, and not just for them to uh, know the nature and the attributes of God, but for them to also experience the, uh, the nature and attributes of God. So we need to get children, we need to translate our, our teaching into getting them into action where they're applying, where they're receiving for themselves, where they're seeing for themselves, where they're encountering uh, and experiencing um, God. They need to experience God's nature. They need to experience his power and his uh, greatness. Look at what uh, Psalms chapter 34 verse 8 says. Can somebody read that please? Psalms 34 verse 8. Anyone? Psalms 34 verse 8. Thirty-four verse 8. Can somebody read that, please? Anyone, the online students? Hello, we have uh, 12 of uh, you uh, online. I think 11 of you online. Can I hear some voices, please? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Uh, thank you, Lyndon. Amen for that. It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Okay, so children should not just learn about God, but they need to taste, they need to experience, they need to see uh, the goodness of God, they need to see all of the nature and the attributes of uh, God. So children should experience God in such a way that, you know, for the rest of their life, they need to have a desire for him, a desire to know him, uh, that relationship with him, so that when you know times of trouble, they're not running to you know um, unnecessary places, they're not going to wrong places, but they're taking their refuge, they're finding their in God, they're finding their strength in God, they're finding him as their um, help. So the first um, real essential in children's ministry where we can invest in children for creating a godly heart in them is that children's ministry must be. God centered. The second thing is that children's ministry must be Bible saturated. You know, um, we know that uh, uh, God has revealed Himself, this great uh, God who we cannot see, who lives in unapproachable light, who no man can see, has ever seen. But this great God has revealed Himself. And one most important place where we uh, uh, you know, know more about him or his revelations or his truth is from the Bible, right? So uh, the Bible is the first and the foremost book about God. And sure, we need to ensure that, you know, uh, children uh, get, bring their Bibles to children's church or Sunday school, and we need to get them to open the Bibles and for them to read from um, it okay so it's very important you know it's sad when he, uh, i see children even in eighth ninth and tenth grade you know they don't know where the books of the bible are uh i know some of us also find it difficult uh but you ask them to read from the bible they struggle and i'm thinking hey these are children in eighth ninth and tenth grade they're reading you know such book heavy textbooks in science and history and you know um uh, geography, and they're not just able to read scripture, even if it's a familiar scripture passage or a familiar verse, they find it difficult to read. And then I realize, hey, they're really not reading um, scripture. They don't have the time to read scripture or the discipline of reading scripture is not inculcated in them. You know, um, I had um, my best friend in school was, uh, you know, somebody from an, uh, another faith. And uh, I remember that, you know, what sometimes we used to stay back late in school for various activities. But uh, she would say, hey, I have to uh, run back home. I have to get back home. She actually stayed uh, just over, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the the boundary of our school. So the boundary and then the, the next compound was a house. So but we used to walk all around and, you know, uh, she used to go uh, uh, as soon as she goes back home, you know, she washes her hands and her face and her feet. 
right? And if she doesn't have time to uh, change, she will just sit in her uh, school uniform and then she'll have this uh, a teacher who would come and to read from their uh, holy book. So their holy book is not written in English. We are more privileged. It's written in another different uh, uh, language, you know, and they learn. You know, they learn all of those um, alphabets, they learn how to read. And by the time they come to grade five and six, they're actually, you know, able to read the whole of their uh, holy book. And I'm just, when I looked at her and I just saw, you know, their enthusiasm to read God's word. And I, and I say, hey, you know, I, uh, uh, I remember my school days, hey, I you know, have this uh, book, the word of God, which is from the true, true and living God. Uh, how much time do I really spend reading God's word? And that's when I really it challenged me. And I started reading uh, God, uh, the Bible because uh, I seeing my friend from another faith, from another uh, religion. You know, so for them, it's, hey, even if you have a test, even if you have an exam, even if it is, um, uh, even if, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's going to get delayed, you have to first learn to read a holy book. You know, you need to spend time. The teacher has come, you know, and the teacher can sometimes even beat them black and blue. I, I, I remember we had friends from the same faith. Uh, good family friends uh, during the summer vacation they would spend their entire summer vacation just learning and doing the uh, the homework that their uh, their priests would come and teach them from uh, you know to how to read the holy book and if they have not done the homework they would beat them black and blue and this this child was very weak and frail and thin looking but uh, her mother would never go and say anything to the teacher she said you know they're teaching them about our god teaching them them about how to read the holy book it doesn't matter and i'm just so amazed at looking at their um, you know uh, the, the zealousness they have for their god it actually um, grew me in my uh, faith in my being zealous for the lord that i worship the true and living god so it's important for us to teach children you know to read the bible from a very young age even if you're narrating a, sto a, a, a narrative i don't say story because um you know, say a narrative, it's important because children think Bible are just like stories, like any other stories. But when you're reading a common narrative or narrating a narrative, you can narrate it to them, but make sure they open it, open the Bible to know where the narrative is coming uh, from. And not just narrate the uh, narrative to them, but also help them to apply the truths in God's word in their life every day. Now, you know, uh, uh, most of our children in our Sunday school and children's church, if you ask them to narrate Zacchaeus story, uh, David and Goliath and, uh, you know, Bart, blind man, Bartimaeus and all of those things, they can they can narrate those stories. But how has it translated? How has it helped apply those truths in their lives? Uh, you know, application is not something that we focus on. So we say, okay, children, you know, just like Bartimaeus uh, had faith, we need to have faith in Jesus or we need to cry out to God for help. But you know, we need to help them how in their own practical ways, in their own uh, real life scenarios, how they can really implement it. When they come back next week, ask them how they have implemented what they learn. And that is very, very uh, important. So even when uh, they they grow and they're reading God's word, they, it, it will automatically become a lifestyle. Hey, I read God's word. I need to apply this in my uh, life. How am I applying it with my uh, life? Okay, so that is something that we need to uh, teach them. Otherwise, you know, reading God's word can become just a ritual, can just become like a chore that we do, uh, like any other thing that we do throughout the um, day. Okay, so this way we can help them to uh, teach them God's word and also help God's word permeate, you know, just flood their entire being and everything they um, do. Okay, uh, look at what um, uh, Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Can somebody read from that, please? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Somebody from the online student can read 2 Timothy 3, 15. Second Timothy chapter three verse fifteen, and that from a child that has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise 
unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abba Baker. So here we see that, you know, uh, Paul is telling Timothy, Hey, Timothy, I know from childhood how you've been acquainted with the sacred writings or with the law, with the, with the scripture. And uh, this has made you wise for salvation. Okay, so if you want to see children saved, you know, what is going to bring them to that place uh, to receive salvation is when they're acquainted or they know scripture or they're taught from uh, scripture. So, you know, teach them the scripture, help them apply the truths, get uh, uh, feedback uh, how they have applied the truths and also give them, you know, we've started uh, giving them scripture passages in our children's church so our children you know, we have like workbooks or worksheets where they take home. And based on the lesson that they're learning, uh, we have scripture passages for them to read Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, throughout the week. And then they come back and they share how they applied what they learned from the scripture passages that they um, read. So uh, we're teaching them the importance of reading scripture and also important of uh, uh, you know, what did you learn about God and what are the truths that you learn from God's word and how you have uh, applied it, okay? So, uh, mere human, uh, you know, work stories uh, are not enough to guide our children to God. They need the Bible, you know, uh, so only God's word can change their hearts. Like we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, that the, only the sacred writings uh, can make them wise for salvation uh, and uh, for faith, even wise to live their everyday lives. The third uh, real essential for children's ministry is that children's ministry must be gospel driven. What do I mean when we say that uh, uh, children's must, ministry must be gospel driven? Any ideas? Yeah, then I think and then maybe the motive of this, when, it's, when we say gospel driven, maybe the motive of this is uh, to share the gospel. I, I'm just thinking like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Lubega, you had your hand up. It should be a good news to them. Okay. Thank you, Abba Baker, that it must be good news to them, whatever we're teaching them about God's word, sharing the gospel, yes. Uh, we must be intentional in proclaiming the gospel to the children and their families, okay? Uh, you remember what Romans 1.16 says? Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Okay, so we saw in Second Timothy chapter three verse fifteen that it is the it makes us wise for salvation, and here it says that it's the power of God for salvation. So when we're saying salvation is not just uh, the moment that we are saved, born again, but also how can we walk in eternal life? How can we live in that eternal li life? How can we save ourselves from uh, sin and from the situations that we face in um, life? And also we see the command of Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Uh, we looked at it last uh, class, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole of creation so gospel uh, when we studied romans gospel for paul is not just you know uh, sharing um, how to be how to come out from darkness into marvelous light but for for paul the entire scripture was the truth was the gospel was the good news so like abu becker says we need to give them the uh, good news okay so sometimes you know when we are sharing with children uh, we can share about um, uh, you know, heaven and hell, and then, you know, um, uh, children are so scared, you know, hey, I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to this place called heaven, and because of that, they accept Jesus as their savior, okay? But, uh, uh, you know, it's imp uh, the word of God says that, you know, uh, uh, we need to accept, uh, you know, uh, salvation is to make Jesus as our Lord and savior of our lives. So we miss out on that first part. And I like uh, what scripture says, you know, making Jesus as the Lord, putting 
the word Lord first before Savior. You know, all of us want to be saved from our sins so that, you know, we don't end up in hell. We, we, uh, we are in a better place and also that we ex uh, enjoy eternal life here and now. But how many of us have really made Jesus as the Lord of our lives? Is he Lord over every area of our lives? Is what something is something that we need to, uh, you know, every day on an everyday basis surrender, you know, ourselves so that he is Lord over our entire being, over every area, every uh, facet of our. Uh, life and i think this is what is important for us to teach children not just you know make him the savior of our lives where he saves us and so we are going to heaven you know hallelujah praise the lord our children are very happy but you know come bring them to a place where they are also making jesus as their lord over every area where they're giving him control and access over every area of their lives and how to live out their salvation uh, uh, you know, of Jesus as their Lord and Savior uh, throughout their lives every day. The fourth thing is that children's ministry must minister to the whole family, right? Do you think children's ministry should uh, minister to just children or to the whole family? Do you agree? Yes, no. Can we have some responses? Do you think children's ministry should concentrate only for children and then the adult church should concentrate only to help out parents? Should children's ministry also minister to the whole family? What do you all think? I think it should. It should minister, despite the fact that they should uh, at least have different sessions sometimes. But I think there are, there are needs a time when everything is holistically being taught. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, anyone else? Uh, you know, uh, APC is involved in um, uh, uh, children's ministry in schools. Uh, so we have this uh, project called Catalyst, where we minister to children in schools. So before the pa uh, pandemic, we were going to schools and teaching them just basically out of scripture. You know, um, we had a scripture, uh, we had a curriculum and also bringing out, you know, values and how to live moral values and how to live their lives. But then, uh, you know, during the pandemic and our post that, you know, the, there was a law that we are, we are not, uh, you know, uh, forbidding us to teach and preach the gospel. So um, uh, we thought, you know, everything will come to a standstill because we can't take scripture to schools. But then we thought, OK, how can we have inroads into schools? So we um, uh, uh, we developed a, a life skill curriculum, which we are we're still writing. Um, and so we've started that life sc uh, skill curriculum in schools. So we're teaching children now about emotions, how to handle emotions. So there was a child in the, uh, and we meet for our, uh, for uh, all of our catalysts, uh, volunteers and uh, staff. We meet for prayer every Friday from four to five. And so uh, the last Friday when we met, uh, one of our volunteers was saying that, you know, uh, a child in uh, ninth grade came and said, ma'am, I understand all you're teaching us. It's so good. Um, it's so important. I'm struggling to, you know, um, implement all of that in my uh, life. And I'm struggling because, you know, um, uh, I'm not able to do that at home because of the challenges I face with my parents or my parents are being so difficult. So, you know, why don't you teach all that you're teaching to us? Why don't you teach the, the parents so that it will help them? And also together we can actually, uh, you know, work things out. Otherwise, just me doing things at home is, is impossible to do everything that you are telling me. And uh, so the the, 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 the the volunteer was saying, uh, you know, telling me that we need to think about having parent-teacher meeting. And she she, tell, she told the child, we'll do what best we can. She said, but you know, ma'am, I think this is what you're teaching us is important for you to even tell the uh, parents, okay? So uh, we recognize that God has called parents to be uh, primary, the faith nurturers of children. Um, but it's important as children's church ministers uh, to partner with parents to assist them in fulfilling this call because some of them are finding it difficult, it's challenging for them. Uh, which means, you know, we need to even serve parents as well as uh, children. So how can we serve parents uh, as children's church ministry or a Sunday school ministry? How can we serve parents? Any ideas?
Uh, is it possible to engage them on one on one teaching with the children? Okay, have a one to one session with the children with them. Okay. With them, I think that will also help them because there are some there are some children that if you call them and uh, teach them and engage them in one on one discussion, you will see most of them will open up and you will know the area that you can also come in. That based my experience here, um, anytime I go to the children's church, I normally organize Sundays for them, not every Sunday. And by the time I say, okay, children, come and tell me this one or the, not teenagers, I'm talking about children. You see, they will tell me what is going on in their home and they're this and that. So from there, I can be able to impart more and speak more of them. And if there's anyone that we need to engage the parents of those children, we will do so. So sometimes one on one engagement is also good at to every children in children ministry. Yes. Thank you, success. I think that you're talking about mentoring, which is very important. Yes. Anyone else? When I look into my my arc of fire as a, a school principal, it is very important to especially during counseling sessions and juvenile delinquencies when kids learn really misbehave we send them for their parents and we try to when a parent is around and maybe the dean of discipline or me around we can ask them how we can inform the parents how the kids are behaving and then we inquire the kids whether that makes their parents happy or even the parent can also come in and then we can go into the scripture to show the kids that when christ was young he used to do this and this and this how do you see about it i think it is very important in that way to engage parents especially in in performance and discipline thank you yes thank you lubega thank you success uh, so lubega did you say you were a principal of a school did i hear right for the last 15 years oh wow <laughs> You never knew that. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, so um, uh, something that we do at our children's church, you know, is that um, uh, we have a parent-teacher meeting. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we invite the parents and then we tell them what we are going to teach the children uh, throughout the year. Uh, what are the topics we're going to teach them. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, take home activities. So we tell them, uh, you know, the, 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 the teachers, um, um, you know, if, uh, the, uh, each teacher uh, for their children in their class, they have a WhatsApp group. And in their WhatsApp group, they post uh, a, a brief gist of what they taught in class that Sunday. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, telling the parents, hey, this is what we taught. So, you know, get your children, talk about it to your children in at different points during the week. Get them to apply what they have learned. So the, teacher, the parents are also aware. And so when the child is doing something, they can reiterate the lesson, tell them, teach them. Uh, you know, uh, help them how to apply what they have learned throughout the week. Uh, also, you know, the uh, in the same WhatsApp message, we uh, the memory verse is communicated. So, uh, you know, the parent also knows. So when the parent is teaching the memory verse to the child, the parent is also learning. Uh, and we also have Bible quiz uh, where uh, we, you know, tell the parents this is what uh, uh, the Bible quiz is on. So to prepare their children. Um, we also have something called mentoring that uh, we have. So in a class, um, uh, say if there are six children in a class and there are uh, two teachers for each uh, class. So, uh, you know, I ask um, each teacher to choose three children. Um, so one teacher handles three children, the other teacher handles three children, uh, uh, just mentors them. Like every Sunday after uh, children's church, just talks with a child, uh, how is your week been? Or if the child has not come to children's church, just call them up, hey, what happened? We missed you. If it's their child's birthday or a child is going through some challenges, you know, just mentor them and then you know also uh, it go uh, the, the weeks they're not in children's church I request the uh, the, the children's church ministers uh, you know to meet the child's parents and say hey I'm your uh, I'm teaching your child children's church uh, is there any challenges uh, your your child is facing which I can help 
I can keep it confidential. I'm here to help. Uh, is there anything I can pray about for your child, for the family? So, you know, the parent also opens up and, you know, that way there is uh, there's a connect. So even if a parent is going through challenges and difficulties, you know, during the week with the child, the parent can call the children's church minister and say, hey, I'm going through this. Please pray. Please help. You know, so that also helps in engaging uh, the parents. Uh, yes, like some of you said, when there is... Um, behavioral issues we call the parents uh, we speak with the child and the parents so the child parent is also aware and together we are here to help the child and if it's a problem with the parent we also you know uh, help them and uh, counsel them okay the fifth one is children's ministries about serving kids or serving children okay what do i mean by this the fifth real essential for children's ministry that children's ministry is all about uh, serving kids. Yes, Abu Bekar. Please, my uh, question concerning the the first point that says that children ministry must be must minister to the whole family. In some cases, we have children that used to come to church without their parents. How are we going to handle that, those situations? Because I started my ministry as a student teacher in my, in, a, in my church, and I discovered that we have some children there that were no, they don't have parents in our church. They just decided to come to church without their parents. They love Jesus, they, they, want to, they want to be a Christian where their parents are either Muslim or traditional, traditionally. So how can we handle those situations? Because you know, there is no parent to carry, carry along with the, with the children, to tell them the curriculum, how we want to treat them, how are we going to handle those cases. So even in, uh, in, in, school, in school settings, we discover, I discovered that the parents, the uh, the unlike parents used to influence their children, while the illiterate used to affect their parents, uh, you know, their students, and their children in the academics. How can we handle those things? Uh, good question. Thank you, Abu Baker. I think the, uh, the 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 first one which you said that children. Uh, who don't come along with their parents, but they like to come to children's church. Uh, so they themselves are self-motivated uh, to know more about God, to learn about God. So I think they will be motivated to apply the truths, to uh, you know learn the memory verse. Of course, they will face challenges. So they, you can be like a parent to them, a mentor. Uh, to them, like Paul mentored Timothy, uh, you know, you can you can be like a parent, a spiritual father to them, uh, or we can be spiritual mothers to them, and just uh, you know mentor them, you know, build them up in the faith, strengthen them, uh, also together with the child, pray for their their parents, um, you know, um, uh, pray for their parents for their um, uh, faith that they will come to faith you can even visit their uh, parents sometimes and introduce yourself if that's okay if they are welcoming and you can even share the gospel but you uh, in uh, uh, god has put you in a place where you can be their spiritual father or the spiritual mother or a mentor you know and you can raise them up uh, uh, to be, you know, godly men and women, godly children, and grow up to be godly men and women, and so you can have that profound influence uh, in their lives. So, you know, God has entrusted a sheep to us. You know, sometimes even children can have parents back at home. They come with their parents to children's church, but from broken homes, broken families, their relationship with their families is no good. Uh, uh, you know, but you can be that uh, that that ga that bridge uh, between uh, their parents and them. You can be like a parent, and you can mentor and teach them. Does that help, uh, Abu Bakr? Okay, I think he lost his connection. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, children's ministry is about serving kids. What do I mean by that? What do we mean by saying that children's ministry about, is about serving kids or children?
Okay, children's ministry is not just about, hey, you know, oh, today I have to go take, uh, you realize uh, Saturday night, hey, I have to go take class tomorrow. Uh, so what can I tell them? Okay, I'll just tell them, you know, the story, um, you know, basic story from the Bible. I'll just tell them. So you quickly have, maybe you're, you're, uh, you're going, uh, traveling in the car and you just quickly take two, three minutes to read the story and then you go and then you say, okay, you know, I finished my job. So it's not about, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, doing our job. It's not about just going and saying, hey, I was rostered today and I was there and I did something, you know, at least I was there to minister. Uh, but it's putting our spiritual needs, our uh, challenges, our difficulties behind and, uh, and putting their needs before us. So, you know, uh, ministering to children can be challenging you know our week was busy it was very hectic we didn't have time to uh, uh we know that our weeks are very busy and hectic so we tell children's church ministers hey from you know, for teaching the next sunday the previous sunday you know uh, sunday evening take a look at the lesson just read through the lesson so that throughout the week you know you're mulling on it you're thinking about it you know when you look at situations when you read the news when we look at something you can say hey this is a good thing to share with the children uh, which will help enhance my uh, teaching something practical something happens in your life some object lesson that you can use so i tell them you know prepare throughout the week don't wait till saturday night and you know just keep praying about it and ask god how to communicate these truths in a very relevant in a very realistic in a very creative way to the children and god you know is a creative god that we serve he will give you ideas so you know sometimes we think hey my life is so challenging so difficult i don't have the time you know i can't go and minister to children i'll i'll just uh, you know whatsapp the children's church minister on uh, saturday night that you know i had a difficult week or i'm tired or exhausted i can't take children's church tomorrow you know let's put all of our uh, needs behind but let's keep their needs in front and minister to them the other thing is you know uh, don't minister to them based on what you are going through or your challenges or what you have faced in their age but you know wait on the spirit of god to ask the, to for your for leading and guiding to know what they are going through you know, so that you can um, uh, minister to them their felt needs and what they are um, going through. Okay. Um, so our ministry becomes great as we excel in this kind of service where we are faithful and committed. Uh, Jesus says in Mark chapter 9, verse 35, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all, which means even putting our needs behind and serving um others okay uh, we'll come back after the break and look at more about how children's ministry is all about serving uh, children okay after the break thank you everyone <laughs> 